are fleet carriers the ultimate status symbol and potential game changer in Elite Dangerous. These massive mobile bases play host to not only your ships, your equipment, but also that of your fellow commanders and squad. The ability to jump 500 light years at a time, providing you have the tritium, is certainly an added advantage. And being able to drop a mobile base of operations close to the nearest community goal certainly makes that grind a little bit easier. But how would we make things different? with fleet carriers? How would we improve the gameplay around them? I certainly had expectations when I first came into the game, and that's fallen a little bit short. However, we're going to go through my top five fleet carrier enhancements I would make if I was in charge. Hello, it's Ricardo, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. So, fleet carriers, my top five ways of how I can improve gameplay around these behemoths that actually sit in game. Well, the fleet carrier, if you didn't know, boasts 16 landing pads to accommodate your fleet. A bustling concourse, they say in the blurb, for crew and visitors is hardly bustling, and most of the time they're falling through the deck plates. There are various modules can replicate essential services like refueling and repair, rearmament, a market to buy and sell commodities, outfitting to outfit your ships and also services. However, owning a fleet carrier does unlock not only a new level of freedom, but also another level of grind in the game. You do have the ability of enhanced mobility of jumping up to 500 light years at any one time, providing you've got that tritium. Um, it does open up an awful lot of exploration opportunities as well. Again, as we've mentioned with the trading and also in regards to having that sort of a community hub. The cost of these are 5 billion credits, although Frontier has been running several deals in the past where they've reduced it upon occasion to about 4. But 5 billion credits is a huge amount, but with some of the in-game aspects of things that have been going around, what with the Spire sites, the Authoresses, community goals, and the very lucrative trade that goes on around them, 5 billion credits is not that far of a stretch as what it used to be back in the game. So I recently went out to you, the community who play Elite Dangerous, in the form of a poll on how you would improve fleet carriers. I gave some examples in a poll and was met with a torrent of fantastic ideas of how these behemoths could indeed be improved in-game. And let's go through them. So straight in at number five, we have the fleet carrier layout or the livery section as well. At the moment, fleet carriers come in four flavors, four different types. You have a Nautilus class carrier, which is meant to be twisted towards exploration, a Fortune class carrier, which is meant to be twisted towards trade, the standard Drake class, that's the standard configuration that you're gonna get when you buy one, and of course, the Vit Victory class, which is meant to be twisted towards combat. Now here's the missed opportunity from my point of view. If I have gone away from the standard Drake Carrier class configuration, and for example, I've moved on to the Victory class configuration, I've paid my arcs, I've paid my money, why can't I affect the background simulation with my big war configured fleet carrier warship? in system, why can't I jump that into a combat zone and affect and turn the tide of the war in systems in a conflict state? Alternatively as well, with the Nautilus class for exploration, why can't I jump into a system that has not been discovered or mapped by me and instantaneously using that exploration class of carrier, why can't I get all that exploration data downloaded to me. And then with trade, if a particular system is in bust, then perhaps parking my trade fleet carry there may help alleviate it over time and bring it in to a more fortuitous state of events for that particular system. What I'm saying is, is that these exist in game. 
Why can't it be taken that just extra step further? I think it's a huge missed opportunity there. It really is. Uh, and the ability to have the roles actually mean something, I think, could easily, well, one, be a quick win, and two, add to the immersion in the game. Let me know what you think on that in the comments. Now, number four out of five of how I'd improve fleet carriers and elite dangerous is all down to carrier missions. Why oh why? Tell me why, when I jump my fleet carrier into an occupied system, that the fleet carrier can't, for some reason, download the missions from the nearest station. If you're in the same proximity as a Coralist station, for example, why can't you download those missions and access those missions from that carrier? How cool would that be? Instead of having to get in your ship, fly away from your fleet carrier, go to the station or the outpost, get your mission, go back, change your ship, whatever you're going to do. If these are meant to be mobile bases, treat them as such. They really should have this ability to run missions from the fleet carrier. I think they're really missing a trick here. Again, let me know what you think on that one. I think that would be a, quite an easy fix to put in place. You jump into an occupied system in your ship, perhaps Again, down to the configuration of the ship, you would get trade missions if you've got a trade carrier. You'd have exploration missions if you've got an exploration carrier, or you'd have combat missions if you had a combat configuration. Now, if you had the Drake class, then you get a small selection of all three. Just a thought. Let me know what you think. And in at number three, it is the Apex Taxi Service. Why not have a taxi rank on your fleet carrier? With the introduction of Elite Dangerous Odyssey a couple of years ago, and the ability to have space legs and walk around stations, we got given access to the Apex Taxi Service. A great way to take your, turn your brain off, not have to worry about flying your ship, jump in a taxi, pay a couple of thousand credits, bang around, They'll drop you off at your destination, and then you just summon one to take you back to your fleet carrier. This would solve an awful lot of problems in game, I believe as well. Especially, for example, if you've left your ship somewhere and or died, um, and you haven't, for whatever reason, been returned to your, to your ship in orbit. I think the ability to go to a taxi rank on a carrier would be absolute key and would feed off the ability to have missions run from the carrier as well, making it a more a central hub for the Elite Dangerous Commander around the different systems of the Elite Dangerous Galaxy. That's my thoughts. Taxis, why not have them in a carrier? Now, you may be thinking there's not going to be an awful lot of space for all these things that we're suggesting. However, it doesn't have to say that you have to have a Vista Genomics. It doesn't have to say that you have to have a Pioneer store or a bar, although the bar is always preferable. You can pick and choose from those modules that get placed inside of the carrier. And if you want a taxi rank, then by jolly Joe, you should have a taxi rank. So hang on, people are at number two now, and that was more complex interiors. Yes, we've got the hangar bay that you can walk around your ship, and you've got elevators, much like what you've got on the stations. When you start to get into the fleet carrier interior, given the size of the fleet carrier, and this is the same for stations as well, it's not very expansive, is it? Um, yeah, we've had the introduction of a bar, which is great. And we've got Pioneer Supplies, and we've got Vista Genomics, and you've got a Fighter Bay. And then you've also got the Observation Deck, um, and the Command and Control Center, or Command Platform, where the Captain's Ready Room sort of place, which we'll see a little bit later on, um, on the same level. However, other things you could have here, perhaps bolted on to Pioneer Solutions. What about an armory? What about a target range to see how different engineering modifications can react to a weapon? 
that would be something pretty good, I think. Obviously, more expansive and complex interiors to a carrier will give it that feeling of additional scale, other than just, you know, seeing it from the outside and going, ooh, that's a big ship, that is. So a target range, more complex, about crew bunks, having the ability to have a bunk on that carrier station, put up some medals, for example, I don't know, walk into a storeroom and see all your on-foot materials just there, how cool would that be? Having the ability to walk around different ships in hangar bays as well. Much like what some of the other games and the competitors to Elite Dangerous have actually had as well. So I think one of the key things would be, like say, an obstacle course as well to try out different engineering aspects on a suit. Um, a target range, more complex interiors, which I think is very much so going to lead me on to point number one. So following on from number two, which is more complex interiors, what about the option of pirates storming your fleet carrier and you having to get yourself back there and repel those borders? How cool would that be? A running firefight to take back your carrier. Now this could be down to the fact that perhaps you're not paying your crew enough. Your crew is not experienced enough. You haven't got enough money there to mount an adequate defense force around your carrier perhaps you're running low on supplies all this could lead to a situation where people may storm your ship now you're never going to lose that carrier let's face it but it'll stop you docking at it you'll have to come up to a side docking port or a particular docking port land your ship get the phasers out in you go let them have it pretty much like what we see on the combat zones. Shouldn't be too difficult to do to add a combat zone inside a fleet carrier should there be a more complex and intricate interior. I think this really could be something. And then also you could have squadron or can clan battles inside said fleet carrier as well. Think how that could change the game dynamic and bring fleet carriers more into the forefront of the game as opposed to it just being a roving base. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've certainly enjoyed making it and theorizing on how the game could potentially be improved. It's knocking on the door of 10 years old and let's face it, you know, it's still out there and people are still playing with it. There's an awful lot of potential to make this game a lot better. Let me know in the comments if you've got any suggestions on how to make fleet carriers even better in Elite Dangerous. And what are the game improvements you potentially could see being of benefit to the player base? I've been Ricardo. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.